so cortisol we've been through this plays as far as i know five important functions it could be more than five i don't know first it stimulates gluconeogenesis or it helps with glycogen formation in our liver when we have to respond to low carbohydrate intake and starvation and this explains why when cortisol is messed up it affects our liver it can cause certain liver disease it's quite possible and when cortisol is messed up it affects the level of carbohydrate in our system maybe our system cannot intake carbs properly it affects whether we can sense whether we are hungry or full that's my take in this and cortisol also helps break down excessive protein and helps mobilize free fatty acids so when cortisol is messed up it can lead to overweight and obesity maybe it cannot break down fatty acids properly and cortisol can also help suppress immune response so when cortisol is messed up it affects our immune system how they function whether they can function properly or not and sometimes i'm sure you've seen somewhere you read somewhere when somebody is stressed it affects the person's mental health due to bullying or financial stress employment related stress all kinds of stress or just living in an unsafe neighborhood this can affect the person's immune system i'm sure we've seen this before right it has something to do with the cortisol level according to my humble opinion and because of that people who live in stressful household stressful neighborhood sometimes they get common cold quite easily so as you can see we are just up to number three when cortisol is messed up it opens a new cans of worms these worms may represent different diseases can you see that and cortisol helps with stress responses so when level of cortisol increase like the weight bias article we just read it can <coughs> increase a person's stress due to weight discrimination it can increase the person's risk for diabetes in years to come not right away and cortisol helps maintain blood pressure and it helps with cardiovascular function this is why when cortisol is messed up it can cause hypertension at least indirectly and it can also eventually lead to different kinds of heart diseases so when cortisol is messed up it leads to all kinds of comorbidities and sometimes living in a certain neighborhood can affect our stress level we've been through this it can affect our physical and emotional stress this can increase our cortisol level just by living in high crime neighborhood by growing up in dysfunctional families it messes up our cortisol and this can in turn increase our blood glucose and this may increase eventually our risk of diabetes we seen that in here and yeah this eventually increase our risk for secondary diabetes can you see that when we are in a stressful environment stressful situation our cortisol level increase and this is going to affect how our immune system and other vital organs function it can lead to 
different kinds of diseases because cortisol has at least five functions. And when cortisol level increase due to medication like the Cushing syndrome or Cushing syndrome, I don't know. Sometimes it's due to medication to treat Cushing syndrome. And this medication can increase the person's cortisol level. And because of that, it can lead to hypertension, osteoporosis, and large supraclavicular fat pads, muscle wasting, poor or slow wound healing. It can change our face, make it more round, more moonlight. It can affect our facial hair, make it darker for ladies. We are talking about sex here, not gender. It can increase the woman's facial hair, make it darker. It can darken the woman's facial hair, sorry. It can increase the risk for cardiac hypertrophy. It can increase the risk for obesity. It can increase the risk for abdominal stride. I don't think I said it right. It can increase the risk for amenorrhea for women. When cortisol level increase, it leads to all these diseases. It increases the risk for all these diseases in this diagram on the right. Just because our cortisol level increase, this is a manifestation of comorbidity. Increase in cortisol can increase angiotensin 2. And increase in cortisol can also increase our vascular response to neurohyphrin. Increase in cortisol can also increase the renal sodium retention. This eventually will lead to increased blood pressure, increased risk for hypertension. This can also eventually lead to increased risk for peptic ulcer. This can also lead to increased risk for glucose tolerance. And this is how when cortisol is messed up, it eventually increases the person's risk for diabetes, especially secondary diabetes. And Cushing syndrome is due to excessive glucocorticoid and androgen being secreted in our system. Cushing syndrome can also be due to having excessive corticotropin in our system. So, as you can see, both social and biological factors are at play in this diagram. Can you see that? Social factors like stress, facing discrimination, being bullied, living in a certain neighborhood, high crime, it causes stress. These are all social factors. It can mess us up biomarkers, the biomarkers in our system. How enzymes and protein functions in our system just because of all these social factors, it can lead to all kinds of diseases. And because of that, I think we need to consider both social and physiological or biological factors when we try to understand the risk of any disease. That's my two cents. Okay. And when we have not enough cortisol. When we have low levels of cortisol, it can increase our risk of Addison's disease. And it, this can lead to hypoglycemia, increase the risk of hypoglycemia. Or this can increase the risk of hypercalcemia, anemia. This can increase pigmentation or affects pigmentation when we don't have enough cortisol in our system. This can affect 
or lower the levels of our sex hormones and we can lose hair, pubic hair when we don't have enough cortisol in our system and we can lose libido or we can experience amenorrhea when we have low levels of cortisol and our muscle can become waste or weak or we can have thinner limbs because we don't have enough cortisol and when we have low levels of cortisol it increases our risk for hypoaldosteronism sorry and it also affects our steroid levels and it can affect our hydration level just because we have low cortisol it can also lead to posterior hypotension it can lead to weight loss because we don't have enough cortisol it can increase our level of plasma it can also affect our adrenal gland how they function so whether it is high level of cortisol or low level of cortisol it can lead to the risk for different diseases so my point is when cortisol is being, being messed up, it can lead to comorbidities. Any questions?